Well, hello, and hasn't it been a really long time since we've visited? How have you been? My name is Carrie, and this is my podcast, My Wool Mitten. I'm coming to you from the middle of the mitten, Michigan's Lower Peninsula. It's been a while since I've podcasted. Those of you who know us and who have been following us, um, I'm glad that you're back. If you are new to the podcast, welcome. This might be a little bit different than what we usually have. Um, like I said, my name is Carrie, and normally at this point I would say to you that I live here on our farm with my husband, but if you do know us, you'll know that I recently lost my husband. He had been disabled for quite a long while. He was going to be 77 years old this month. It wasn't unexpected, but it still is a shock to the system. Um, I'm not going to talk a lot about that in detail here, but I, ha I do have to talk about it a little bit. It was a, a part of my life, a part of this podcast. He was a part of every single thing on this farm, and to not say anything wouldn't be right. I'm not going to give any details, I'm not going to share private things or personal things, but I'll talk a little bit about how we're doing um, at, at the end of the podcast, and that way if you don't want to watch it, or if it's it doesn't mean anything to you, you can just stop. But I, I do want to include something, and so that will be at the end of the podcast. Um, I, I am doing okay, and I thank all of you who have reached out in any way, big or small. It means more than you know what a community this is, this fiber world. Um, it, it, it just, it really is, and it means a lot. Um, to say, you know, I think you somehow, you know that the world has changed when you lose someone that you love and you know things will be different and you tend to think but there are those things that are going to go on that uh, that go on unchanged but I'm finding that's not true even those routine things even those seasonal things that happen in the same way farming um, making hay lambing caring for sheep um, taking care of the bits and parts of the farm or the household that need to be done they may be done in the same way, but they're not the same because my husband was a part of every single bit of that. We did everything together, whether physically or just um, emotionally or supportively. And so to have him not be here, it's just different. It's just different. I don't know how to say it any other way than that. But I wasn't sure that I was going to podcast again, like I said, but I I have wanted to touch base with you guys. This podcast, if you're new, focuses on a small family farm that tries to farm in the ways that we grew up doing. I don't know if we call them old ways or not, but... Uh, in traditional ways, maybe more traditional ways. Old equipment, making do with what we have, and um, always trying to be moving forward, but without losing our tradition. I talk mostly on this podcast about sheep and fiber, knitting and spinning, some farming, some gardening, especially at this time of year. And so I have been filming some bits and pieces on and off here in the last couple of weeks as I've had my phone with me, my camera. And so I'm just going to put those pieces together and um, hopefully highlight a little bit for you um, some of the farming, some updates on the sheep flock, a little bit of knitting update, and uh, just a, maybe a brief mention of spinning. Um, I think probably I'll show you a little bit of the garden been spending a lot of time outside since Bill passed and um, I'll just try to put that together and uh, just show you some bits and pieces and then if 
If I decide to go forward from there, we'll maybe try to be a little bit more cohesive. Is that the word that I want? I hope you all have been well. I've tried to, I've actually been spending a lot of time with a lot of you, maybe without commenting or saying anything, because if I can't sleep or if I come in in the heat of the day and I don't want to sit in the quiet, I catch up on podcasts or your Instagram feeds. And so you guys have kept me going in that way. And I appreciate that. I'm sorry I get the glare every now and again from the window. Um, what else? It might take me a little bit to get that put together, but I am trying to out a new editing software and see if I like that better. If, if it gives me too much trouble learning, don't know how much brain space I have, then I'll go back to using the old, old um, editing program that I had. So that's that. Um, this is a new location. Um, I find myself landing here often. Um, this is us back here. And I just, um, I just find, I find myself landing here, I guess is a good word. So I'm probably not making a whole lot of sense. It's very hot here in Michigan. It has been hot for a few days. I'm fresh out of the shower. I worked outside. It, it's You just get up as early as daylight and you work until you can't stand it anymore. And then you have to come in and take a break. I, I feel fortunate that I can do that. And so... Um, so I thought I'd sit down real quick here and just just film this introduction to, for you. So look, I hope this will be out shortly and that it will make some sense to you. And thank you for, for coming back. Like I said, if you are a returning viewer and if you're a new viewer, maybe go back and watch some of our older episodes and then come back for more. I hope that going forward, this might still be of interest to you if you do decide to watch. I'm going to stay here on the farm. I'm going to keep the flock of sheep. I'm going to, as long as it's financially um, doable with this changing world that we have, um, you, you just don't know. But a few things already that are going to be a little different, but it might be of interest to you if you are an older person looking to be on a farm or a small homestead. If you're a young person, I would encourage you to watch because guess what? If you're lucky enough to live to older days, you're not always young and um, with immense energy and maybe access to resources that you're not able to access when you're older. So anyway, it will be a little bit different, I think, but hopefully interesting to some of you. So I look forward to updating you on those things and getting your feedback of what you'd like to see and hear if I go forward. So I'm going to quit rambling here and stop. And uh, following should be some footage of, like I said, some things that have been happening here in recent days. And so, um, yeah, it's good to see you guys. We'll talk real soon. There now, the light's not going to be very good. And probably the pictures won't either because he does like to come, kind of come close. But there's Quigley and here's Quincy the Ram. And they are in the barn in this heat. They, I've been letting them out at night to graze, but it's so hot and muggy, and sorry for my shadow, it's so hot and muggy that uh, it's a little bit cooler here in the basement of the barn. Not a lot, but the bugs aren't as bad. Hi, handsome. So he's got a beautiful top line and a very handsome Coradale head, but he just keeps growing. <laughs> he was a triplet, as was Quigley. Bill fell in love with his pictures. And the fleece sample that Kathy sent us, we were needing a new bloodline, um, and there were, just weren't any here in Michigan that weren't 
too closely related to ours. I keep moving around because I keep thinking, well, maybe I can get a little better picture of him. He's such a juvenile. He really is. He just reminds me of a big old lamb. He is a jumper. Like if I wasn't filming here, I would, I have another gate that goes up across here. Because he can leap out of there easily. And he does. But, oh, aren't you tough? Aren't you tough, huh? You think you are. He never has tried to be mean to, to um, butt at me. He'll pick on Quigley. I, I don't know how things will go as they get older. Yeah, we don't pet boys on top of the head, do we? Hmm? Just chin scratches. Sometimes ear rubs. But Bill and I talked about this at length. It was um, one of the things that we spent a lot of time talking about in those last days, those last weeks with him. We knew we needed new bloodlines. This guy had the type of fleece that we don't find on Coradales that much anymore. He's got great confirmation. My concern is his size. My ewes are small, so I don't know. Um, the thought was, the thing that Bill and I discussed, was that we could use him on everybody that we have, but I'm not going to use him on the really small ewes, and I'm not going to use him on the fin ewe. And then, of course, I lost Hannah, and she was one of the white Coradale ewes I had planned to breed him to, but I have her two daughters. And I've got two others that I think I'll use him on. So I'll tell you a little bit more of the backstory, but I, I had hoped to sit here and do bucket talk and be able to tell you, but he wasn't cooperating or being in the shot. Right? Weren't ya? And here are the chicken sisters. Well, here we are. I've come inside. I really had this whole idea in my mind of how I was going to introduce you to our new farm ram. I had planned for it to be a bucket talk down in the barn, getting to be introduced to him and Talk to, talking to you a little bit about him, but the weather just hasn't cooperated, um, or he hasn't cooperated. He's, like I said in the little video that I took downstairs, he's such a juvenile. He's a year, well, he was a year old in February, but he, he just reminds me of a lamb. He just reminds me of a lamb, or um, a silly pre-adolescent, I guess. But anyway... His size, you just don't think of him as being such a goofy acting guy. Now, Kathy tells me he was not a bottle lamb. But that would have, that was my first thought. That's how he acts. He chews on everything. He uh, wags his tail when you scratch under his chin or around his ears. And he's got to have his nose on everything. You know, I mean, he's, he's really curious. Um, he's not mean to me. Um, he doesn't make any move like he's going to try to, you know, uh, run at me or anything like that. He, he pushes Quigley around a little bit, but not too serious. So all in all, I, his personality just tickles me to death. I really enjoy that about him. His size concerns me. Um, but anyway, I'm not going to get off topic on that. What I do want to tell you is that he he did come from Seven Sisters Farm in Illinois. He's a Coradale Ram. His sire has some of the AI genetics, so he has some Australian bloodlines there, and I think that shows in his fleece. He, um, his mother, uh, the U flock has some Western bloodlines, from what Kathy tells me. He's not registered, but he is pure blood. He's a triplet, and he was a year old in February. He sheared 15 and a half pounds of fleece on his first shearing, 
and it the samples that Kathy sent us were gorgeous and it's one of the things that Bill really went crazy for it was that fleece and I have I guess kind of a special spot in my heart for the ram because Bill was so excited about getting him we talked we sat right in this room I sat right in this chair and we talked endlessly about this guy um, finding a way to get him here spending the money to get him here and a huge shout out to Kathy because she really made it possible and I appreciate that so much uh, as I said I first learned about them through Melissa at Knitting the Stash and she and her husband Spencer were keeping some of Kathy's flock at her at their farm and so I saw pictures videos of the flock and if you watch Melissa's podcast which you should if you don't um, she, when she talks about the sheep she mentions the you Cindy Crawford who I think that was a name that Spencer might have given to the you I might be wrong about that but that's what it sticks in my mind well that's the mother of this guy he is called Quincy he's called Quincy uh, because I needed a name that started with Q and uh, being a fan of old uh, TV series from when I was a kid or a younger person there's a fly buzzing around here figures doesn't it farmhouse anyway a Quincy was a medical examiner played by the actor Jack Klugman I think his name is and in the hour-long program Quincy had solved all the problems and had all the answers and so I thought that is a good name to have for a ram that you want to do good things for your flock so the thing that excited Bill and that he talked about a lot is that this guy, um, that I should be able to use him for a few years going forward on our flock and also keep daughters of his. Um, and so that was the plan was to breed him to everything. But just looking at his size, and I can hear, hear Bill saying in my head, the U is going to determine the size of the lambs. But I'm looking at those long legs and thinking, oh, I don't want to have a tangle of legs when it comes lambing time. And I'm not borrowing trouble either, but I, I'm sure I'm not going to breed him to the fin you and probably not her daughters for their first time lambing. So uh, that means I will have to breed them to something else, but that's okay. There is a little ram lamb that is from our old stock that's down here that I could keep and breed them to and then um, sell him afterwards if I want to. So that's the story about Quincy and how he came to be. And um, we started talking about it in February, went back and forth with Kathy. Thought we had a ride home for him a couple of different times. Of course, COVID happened. A few other things happened. And finally, uh, then Kathy sent, uh, you know, sent a note and said, how about if I just bring him? And so she did, and she had trouble on the way. And oh, my goodness. So hopefully all that's, all of his um, bad luck it doesn't follow with him. It's all behind him. I'm quite excited about him. I, I just wish he was a little more compact package, but we'll see. It's the modern times, right? And I, I should have grabbed, I've still got a sample of his fleece. I should have grabbed it. Maybe I'll put a picture in. So um, my knitting anymore, and I think I've talked about this a little bit before, has to mean something to me. Um, maybe it has something to do with a date, maybe it has something to do with the background of a pattern or the pattern writer, the yarn. And when Melissa of Knitting the Stash uh, introduced her Shorn 2, the second version of the Shorn yarn that she produces with Kathy, she, she gets Kathy's fleece and then she has it made into yarn. I bought a skein um, I was talking to Kathy at this point about buying a ram, and so I bought a skein of shorn, and it came, and it was just beautiful. I don't know. Now this is caked up, and I don't know if this will show. I, I don't know if it will show the color. There is some. This is Corydale, but also I think a Teeswater fleece in it, and then I held on to it, and my plan was that I was going to cast on a pair of socks on the day that the ram arrived here at the farm. Well, that got put on hold for quite a long time. Um, but I did cast on the toe of the socks 
the evening uh, that Kathy dropped him off. And the pattern that I decided to use is the um, pattern by Mars of Hay Brown Berry. And is it Rest and Relaxation? The R&R Socks. I haven't been knitting socks lately. The small needles and the small yarn hurts my hands. But I just thought this is toe up, which is my favorite way to knit socks. And um, I knew that I could make it, looking at the stitch pattern, I could make it a number that I could use a thicker yarn with. The shorn is probably closer to a sport weight. And then I'm pairing it with our farm yarn, the last one we had done. If it's focusing. I don't think it's gonna. There, maybe it's better. Anyway, because this is a, it carries two colors. And so I just thought that would be a good thing to blend together. And I'm making my poor little old hands do this because I need a new pair of hand knit socks and I need a new pair of hand knit wool socks. So I started them, and I would have done two at a time on the Magic Loop, but I didn't have the size needles that I wanted, and so I'm doing them, you know, at the same time. But then, of course, it wasn't long after that that Bill started to get worse, and really knitting set just in the basket. There were times I picked them up and knit a few rows and then just put them back down. This is how far I am. I'm farther along with one than the other. And again, let's see if that's going to focus. I think it's focusing pretty good there. Mars, of course, has written a beautiful pattern. And I want to I want to work on them with good thoughts that Quincy will do everything that we had hoped that he would do for our flock going forward. I've had a goal, and I don't know if I've ever said this before, but I had hoped that if my health lasts, that I would be raising sheep until I was 70. I'll tell you, give away my age, that's eight more years. Now maybe that won't happen. Physically, um, financially, it may not. But if everything goes as planned and the lambs are okay, then this gives me probably Easily three years, maybe four. So we'll see how that goes. So that's the introduction to Quigley. And, I'm sorry, Quincy. Quigley is, is running with him as a weather to be a companion to him. Um, so that's the story of Quincy. That's our, the big news that I had that I wanted to share about the farm flock. And you know, that's the thing, is that you have to always be looking forward and making adjustments uh, to keep your farm viable, to keep your flock healthy, um, to keep your interest up. I told Kathy that, and I told the kids, I probably wouldn't have gone ahead and gotten the ram, but Bill was so excited about him. And he, everyone he talked to that, you know, knew anything about our farm or that was interested in farm, he told about this ram and how excited he was to get him. And so, of course, when he came, I took pictures and video and brought up to show him and so that he could see him. And he just kept telling me, don't you worry about that size. Just think about that fleece. Just think about that fleece. Think about that confirmation. And so that's what I'm going to do. And I hope you guys will follow along with the adventures of Quincy and the small Coradale flock and see. Uh, I have some more knitting to tell you about, uh, but I think I'm going to take a little break from this. I just wanted to uh, sit down after I'd taken the video of, of Quincy and then tell you the story of him. I've tried to record it several times, tried to set outside in the pasture and record it, tried to do bucket talk and it just wasn't working. So here I am in the in the place that the dream of having him uh, transpired and, and was hatched and thought out. So maybe this is the best place for it to be. So um, so that's this part of the of the podcast and a little bit of a knitting update and I will talk to you some more in just a little bit. Shorn Yarn from Melissa and Knitting the Stash. Serenity Farms Yarn, sold out except for what's in my stash. Coradale Yarns, 
and a beautiful pattern from Mars at Hay Brown Berry that are going to be comfy wool socks for me. The other knitting that I've been working on is the project that I had started in my last podcast that I put out, and that is the Treasures of the Forest Path by Patricia uh, at P4 Chen. P4 Chen, yeah. Um, and I had been working along on that and got through, while, while Bill was sick, I got through the garter stitch area. And then um, it was time to start the lace, which is a very simple lace, but I just didn't have the, I'm going to move this just a little, oh, sorry about that. I just didn't have the capacity to do it. And so I set it aside and only picked it up again here in just the last few days. But I've been slowly gathering my treasures and actually the treasures that I'm gathering are memories. And so I work a few rows every day, sometimes out in the garden, and sometimes when I get up and have my coffee in the morning, it's growing, so you can imagine it's kind of a warm project to be working on. But it's a beautiful project, and I'm using our our farm yarn and um, that you know has a special meaning because it was a mother and daughter uh, fleeces that were put together to make that yarn. So... Uh, that's my other knitting project that I've been working on. So the socks and the knitting, or the shawl, are pretty much the only two things that I've been doing. I have been doing a little bit of spinning, and I may save that for the next episode to talk about. So, so that's what I'm working on, and I'll probably just put a picture or two in here to show you the progress on it. But that's Treasures from the Forest Path, part of a, a series that Patricia is releasing this year. So be sure to go and check those out. Rest and Relaxation Socks, a pattern by Mars of Hay Brown Berry. I've dubbed them my Rest and Remember Socks. One other knit item that I've been had been working on that I failed to mention earlier was the Ollivander turtleneck. And this is a pattern designed by Fable Knitwear. I love her patterns. They aren't all something that would look nice on my short, chubby, elderly body, but um, I don't know. I it was part of her magical places knit along. The Ollivander turtleneck and it is written for fingering weight. I knit it with magical Newtedon yarn and my contrast for the wands down here at the bottom was probably not as much as it needed to be and I went ahead and made the ribbing on the bottom in the contrast and color but I don't care because I love it anyway. All I have left to do is the sleeves and it was supposed to be like a double turtleneck but I wasn't sure I don't have any trouble wearing New Teton, but I wasn't sure if I wanted the double turtleneck. Now I kind of wished I would have. So I'll talk more about that maybe in another episode, but I did want to mention it. Bill loved to watch me knit with the New Teton. He loved to watch Caroline and Knut's podcast and hearing their story. And so... 
it makes another connection, I guess, for me. And doesn't the color go well with the hay? <laughs> So, Ollivanders, Turtleneck, part of the Magical Collection, Magical Places Collection by Fable Knitwear and Magical Newton Yarn. All right, I'm going to try this one more time. I've tried to think of a way to share with you on the podcast about Bill's passing. Um, so as you can imagine, I've recorded and re-recorded and scrapped quite a few discussions of it. I apologize. I've had some dental work, so if I sound a little, um, if I'm not too clear... <laughs> because I'm having a little bit of a hard time getting used to this. But anyway, I'm off track again. Um, as I said at the beginning, I'm not going to say a lot about it because it's a personal thing and a private thing. And if we were sitting down together, you and I, and talking across the table or down in the barn, then I might talk about it a little bit more. But, um, but some things we just will keep to ourselves. He was... He was disabled for a long time, but he, was, he wasn't ill for a long time. He was a very vibrant and important part of our lives, of course. We were together really 24 hours a day. Um, I, I, we have wonderful children and friends, and so I did get breaks, of course, every now and again. And especially thanks to our, Bill's youngest daughter, who lives close by, who was a tremendous help, and I couldn't have done it without her. Uh, my own daughter, who helped us a great deal with her experience in the medical field, our granddaughter, our oldest daughter for the moral support. Really, I, I can't single every person out because there just was so much help, but anyway. It wasn't COVID. It was um, mostly related to his kidney function and the failure of that. Uh, after his last long stay in the hospital in the nursing home, we had long, many long nights of discussion, and we knew that he was not. He had chosen not to go back to the hospital and not to go back to the nursing home. So we had things arranged and set up so that he could be at home in his last days. And really, thankfully, when that time come, it, it actually happened very quickly. And it's still hard to believe because there have been many times throughout the years where we've been afraid that it was the time that we were going to lose him. And he always managed to pull through. This time, he didn't. I don't talk about it a lot here, but I have a very, we have a very strong faith. And I don't mean the kind of television and um, political faith that you see all over the airways now. We have very strong, deep-rooted faith. I know that I'll see him again. He knew that he was going to a place where he would be walking on two legs again. And so he wasn't afraid of that. But not being afraid of that and knowing where you're going and knowing that I'll see him again doesn't stop the sting of knowing that in this lifetime I'm not going to talk to him or see him again face to face. And those are the parts that are that are difficult. I can get through most of the days pretty good. I'm pretty lucky with everything that surrounds me, but every once in a while it hits me that I'm not going to wake up at 2 o'clock in the morning and share a cup of coffee with him, that I'm not going to come up from the barn with a lamb story to tell him and 
previously in this video, you would have seen and heard me talk about the ram that he helped me choose for us going forward. And then when he got here, when the ram got here and I wasn't sure about it and I thought maybe it was a mistake that we had gotten him, Bill said to me, maybe you're right because you know I'm not going to be here in the spring to see his lambs. Silly guy. And he won't be. But I, I think he'll know what they are just the same. So anyway, I couldn't not talk about him, you guys. Um, some of you feel like you know him from the videos. Some of you that I um, converse with privately know a lot more about him. And so I couldn't not say anything. But I do want to tell you that it was a peaceful home going for him. He and I were able to wake up in the morning together and share a few sips of coffee. The girls were just a short distance away so they could come. And I think that's all I'll say about that, except for that if he had orchestrated it, and I think he did, he couldn't have done it any better. With God's help, I'm sure. I'm certain of it. So we'll go forward. Um, not the same. Maybe the steps are the same. Maybe the walk is the same, but the steps are changed because he's not here. <laughs> Can you hear the lambs downstairs? I'll bet somebody's on the wrong side of the gate. I'll have to go and check. So anyway, thank you for listening to me. Thank you for letting me shed a few tears with you. It's not the last I know that you'll hear about my bill. The larger than life person who's still with us in everything that we do. So I'm going to end now. And I hope that you'll come back if I keep podcasting. If not, we'll see each other on Instagram maybe. And share a few laughs and stories and yarn and fiber and pasture walks and walks through the woods. Thanks for listening, you guys. Thanks for coming back. Thanks for waiting. Thanks for being a support to me through this time that I've known you. On nights when I couldn't sleep and Bill was asleep. Um, and nights when I sat knitting and nights when I couldn't knit. Nights when I needed a or days when I needed a distraction and you guys listened and talked. Thank you. And please come back again and see what's happening at my wool mitten in the middle of Michigan's lower peninsula with sheep and wool in our hearts and in our hands. And with the larger than life giant of a man who is ever here with me. Take care. Excuse you, you just finished your breakfast, didn't you?